Hey guys, Nick here, OK Off-Road Mowers. I want to introduce you guys to the next build coming to the channel. He's a yard man, 18 horse, four speed. From what I can tell, it's a 2300 series fearless transaxle. Heavy duty, one inch shafts. Briggs engine. Lots of work to do, but let's just say Musty's gonna have some competition in the snow. Stay tuned, guys. Okay, today I'm gonna go over how to modify your factory front axle to a off-road status one. That's gonna be involving a change in the articulation point from the center of the axle to on top and maybe even up a little more. Uh, changing the tie rod, upgrading it, making it stronger. Uh, we're gonna keep these spindles and spindle uh, rods here, but we're gonna make them a lot more stronger and maybe uh, change them up just a tiny bit. But we're gonna be just making everything beefy, strong, and tight. That's the big part. So we're gonna get into right cleaning this right now, and then uh, we'll go over in depth where I'll be pos positioning things and putting stuff. So let's get to it, folks. All right, there's literally like a million different front axle types. They're all different, some are good, some are bad. This style is the style I like to start with if you're gonna be uh, modifying your factory I-beam or swing beam. Uh, in the future, I'll be building my own uh, from scratch, so that will look completely different. But if you're modifying your original one, these are the best ones to start with. This is out like a Craftsman 5 speed, anything along that lines. This is out of Nick's mower. Uh, hint, hint, Nick's building another mower. Uh, that's going to be coming to the channel soon. Stick to it. Let's get with it. All right. So if you're like me, you like making get, you like making getting things clean uh, to start with. So the first thing you're going to want to do is pop your uh, spindles out of your axle housing, or swing beam housing, or whatever you would like to call it. Like that, holy fuck, these have not been greased in a long ass time. These ones got nylon inserts that are actually in really good shape, so I'm gonna keep those. But uh, oh fuck yeah, check that out. Under quick inspection, boom. So even fucking your factory, factory units can still break stuff. So we're gonna make sure everything's still good. Weld that, fix that, brace it. But uh, still a good unit to start with. But like I was saying, these can be nylon, plastic, whatever. Uh, I like making metal ones or uh, like copper, or brass or something like that, I mean. Uh, but these ones work good, so we'll use these for now. Okay. Okay, well under further inspection, this front axle's pretty fucking, she took a big impact at one point. So luckily for Nick, I got a spare front axle. Uh, so I'm gonna start with that one. So like I was saying, you can use whatever. That's the factory one, I'm gonna make this one work. Doesn't matter really. Um, so yeah, let's get at it with the new one. I'll show you guys what to do. Cool, because this one's even cleaner than the other one. Let's get right. It. I've made some progress on uh, Nick's front axle here. So as you can see, this is where I'm going to be placing my uh, articulation point. I welded in a couple pieces of rebar and then flattened it out. And then I made this little guy, which is some one-inch square tube with some, or one-inch square, yeah, tube, whatever you want to call it, and then some uh, three-quarter inch round tube. And then his originally original bolt slides in there, super fit tight, super tight fit. <laughs> um, and then that goes on there, if that makes good sense. And then I'll build some gusseting, some trussing around it to make it look all nice. And then Nick's got a new front axle. We'll get on to some uh, spindles. Let's do it. Okay, there it is. Sometimes it takes a bit of time to get it exactly straight and perfect. I had to knock this one off a couple times to get it 
the way I wanted it, but I slid the bolt in. Oops, slid it in, everything looked super straight, so I'm super happy. So I'm gonna continue on now with my uh, bracing or trussing, as you might wanna call it. Let's get it. Okay, as you guys can see, I welded it all up there. Nice and gusseted. Backside's open. I don't know if I'm gonna fill that yet in or not, but welder worked really good. That's gonna be super solid for Nick. Super happy with that. Okay, working on Scrappy's front axle. As you can see, she's looking nice. Okay, so some spindle work. So this original steering arm sat right here, sorry, kinda looked like this, nice and long. It was welded on here. I'm gonna shorten it, bring it closer to the frame. I'll show you guys once I weld it on. And then I'm going to be rebuilding the tie rod I'll be shortening this, so moving this hole closer to the spindle, and then this hole closer and over. So this hole might be sitting over here. I haven't decided yet. It might even just be a little bit closer and bend down a little bit. We'll see when it comes to it, and then the rest will be uh, a gusset from here to here, or a brace from there to there, and then same thing from here to here. So I'll start getting that shit done, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, there it is. Now this is just very rough. I still gotta do a lot, but to give you guys an idea. So this is the front of the mower. This is actually how it's gonna sit if the engine was here and the frame and everything, the transaxle's behind here. So this is the back, this is the front. So I'm putting the steering rod actually in behind. So that way it won't get bent or anything. I like that system instead of in front of the axle. Um, obviously it needs to get uh, straightened, or not straightened, lengthened out because uh, if this one's straight, that one's very cocked. If that one's straight, you get it. Um, but the idea was to move this in because when we had this mocked up in the frame, we saw that the steering linkage, because it's a little bit different instead of on the left side coming in, the steering rod is actually coming in on the right. So it's going to be coming in, boom, coming in like that, if you get what I mean, and then be pushing, pulling and pushing right here. So I got to bend a bar to go under this, but this originally sat out too far, so that's why I moved it back. I'm going to be trusting that and uh, bracing it to make it all strong, but to give you guys an idea, that's what it is. Hope you like it. I talk a lot. Yep. For you guys, though. All for you. There's just an idea of what it looks like. The steering. As you can see, it's been shortened there. I cut the, the tab off, the steering tab, and uh, re-welded it on there. Just remember that uh, because these are all bent at different angles, you want to make sure this is somewhat straight when you put it in, kind of like so. Get it. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly correct myself. The front, this is the front of the mower. So transaxle, everything's in the back. I had that reverse when I was explaining for whatever. Anyways, you guys can see, I cut this arm, rebent it down. So now it's going to sit under here, like before, but this used to sit up a little bit closer. Anyways, our tie rod end. Okay, tie rod end is gonna actually sit up in there, probably somewhere like that, with the spacing and whatnot, and that'll give us plenty of uh, clearance and whatnot for our steering assembly. Um, I'm gonna put all this stuff, gusset it, make it look nice, and get it going. I'll show you guys once I'm done. All right, people, check that out. We got some spindles, tie rod, I got them spindles, nice and strong. Don't bend, like I said, put some kind of bracing in there so they don't bend. Build your tie rods nice and strong. Another spindle. And then the actual I-beam itself, and this is what I just did now, is I laid out these center washers kind of thing like, started out, they're kind of cone washers, top and bottom. And then that's both sides. Flip it over. You guys can see got grease nipples on both sides. So I'll be able to grease the whole inside tube. And uh, not have to worry. Super sweet setup for Nick. Super jelly. Fuck yeah, Nick. Hope you like it. Big scrap. He's going to love it. <laughs>
Damn. Trustable tie rod. Lime joints. Plenty of steer action. This is the back. So the rest of the mower is this way. That's how you buck. I'll flip it around so you can see what that looks like. Okay, this is it from the front. As you can see I got this filled in. I actually put a full uh, solid bar in there to add some weight. And that actually had a decent amount of weight. I was surprised. But there it is. Next mower is going to be looking beef.